Okay, so good morning. These are the EuroPython sprints. So I'm going to give you a short introduction. Um, basically a the, the same what I did on Thursday for the conference, plus with a few additions. And uh, then we are going to have a, ver you know, a set of short intros to the various different sprint teams. <coughs> so let's start. Welcome to EuroPython 2020, the 19th EuroPython conference. This is the sprints opening. So we already had two days of conference. We sold more than 1,000 tickets, well sold or registered. Uh, we had attendees uh, yesterday, up until yesterday from, actually 69 is not right anymore, it's actually over 70 now. Um, 70 countries, which is uh, a whole lot. So. It's really incredible how this online format makes it possible for other people to from you know all around the world to join. Uh, we'd like to especially welcome all the new Europythonistas. So if you haven't been to Europython before, then you're very, very welcome here. And we'd like to ask all the regulars, people who've come to Europython before and know, for example, how the sprints work at Europython, to, to help these newcomers feel at home because we want to, you know, make it possible for everyone to participate in the same way and we're one big family and this is your conference so basically what you make you have to make uh, the conference happen and we can provide the framing but uh, it's really up to you to to make this a great conference we want to thank the sponsors uh, who make it possible to run these events uh, especially microsoft and bloomberg the main ones uh, there is a sponsor exhibit available on on discord um, I am not sure whether the sponsors will actually attend uh, and, and be available in those exhibits, but you can try, of course. Uh, you can see the sponsors in Discord on the right. They um, are shown up, I think, in purple it was. Well, originally, of course, we wanted to do the conference in Dublin. <coughs> uh, COVID-19 made that impossible. Uh, and so we had to move online. It was a lot of hard work, um, but we will, you know, go back to Dublin in Ireland uh, next year. So you can already record the date. Uh, it's the last week of July next year, July 26th until August 1st. Uh, and uh, we will start with the organization later this year uh, and then probably announce everything maybe in December, or maybe in January. Uh, so that you can then sign up there. We'll have sprints there, of course, as well. The format uh, is almost the same as what we had for the online event. Plus, we will have training days and workshop days, which we had to drop this year. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, having an, an in-person event is, I think, it's always better than an online one. But that's all you can do, right? There's also a chance in, in doing something online. Like I said, you can join from many different parts of the world. And indeed, uh, many people did. So we had l lots of people from Asia join, lots of people from the Americas join. And and so um, I think in this uh, this aspect of doing something online is, is not something that you should just uh, ignore. It's just actually something very important. You can reach out to more people. And this also goes for the sprints. We've extended the sprint days. Um, the, the schedule for the sprint days to have more room for people from other time zones to join. So in the morning sessions, the uh, Asian uh, time zones can can join. Uh, we've added uh, more sessions in the late um, well late night we call them <coughs> after dinner basically, uh, so that the Americas uh, can 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 continue working there or can uh, can run their sprints there as well. It was a huge effort for us to convert from uh, from the in-person event to the online event. <coughs> we do know how to run an in-person event, so that's basically business as usual for us. It's still a lot of work, of course, but we know what to do. We know exactly where the pain points are. We know uh, how to address these, uh, and we know where to get help from vendors and so on. Uh, for the online event, we had to basically relearn everything from scratch. So it took us four months to get from basically zero to this, what you have right now. Um, it was a huge challenge. Uh, it only worked because of our fantastic team that we have. Uh, and I really like to thank our team. We've put a collage up here. Uh, these are some of the, the team members, not all of them. We have 25 people in total. And um, 
yeah, I'd like to give them a big hand, so let's play our applause again. This is what we do to emulate the applause. at the in-person conference. So, Europython is backed by the Europython Society. This is just, you know, so that you know what who is running this. It's a non-profit organization. Um, the purpose is to, you know, run Europython and to support the Europi European Python community, <coughs> much like the PSF, but on a smaller scale, so we only uh, focus on Europe. It's all volunteer driven, no one gets paid for this. Uh, all the profits that we generate using the conference go directly into the grants and the finate, and uh, so this is how we operate. Some statistics from yesterday's closing session of the conference, or the conference days, let's say. Uh, we have around a thousand attendees from more than 70 countries. Uh, we sold more than 1,000 tickets or registered them. Uh, we've registered around 350, actually the number is not right anymore, I think it's 390 now, uh, sprints only tickets, so there there is a huge potential there f if you're running a sprint to get lots and lots of new people into your project and, and you know, welcome them and, and uh, introduce them to what you're doing. So how we r will we run this? Uh, I think uh, we already put some information up uh, on the website. So we are using Discord as our main platform. Discord is going to be used for chatting. It's going to be used for specifically for the sprints, also for the audio video part. Uh, for the smaller sprint teams, uh, we are going to use Zoom rooms for s for larger groups. So let's say you have a um, a group of maybe I don't know 30, 50 people or so then uh, using Discord uh, does not really work that well anymore. So uh, we will provide you with uh, Zoom rooms and so we would like to then ask you to reach out to one of the organizers so that we can reserve one of the Zoom rooms for you and then we can make uh, configure everything, make it happen. Um, a few words about Discord. Uh, if you don't know Discord, it's it's a chat tool. Um, it was originally created for for gamers, but now it's it's you know broadening the scope a lot, and and lots of uh, other communities are are joining on Discord to work together. Um, it has a very standard setup. You ha on the on the left you have I don't know if you can see my my cursor, but on the left you have the um, the channels. You have categories here that you can open and close. On the right you see the people who are currently online and in the middle part this is the chat part. Um, what you see here is the welcome channel. This is where you registered uh, for the conference <coughs> and then you probably talk to our registration bot who registered uh, you to the rest of all the channels. Uh, most important here uh, is the the announcement channel. This is where we will post announcements and then what's not on the screen is we have a sprint category uh, and in the sprint category, there's a uh, channel called Sprint Sprints Hall, I think it's called, um, and and that channel is going to be used basically for us to mingle. Uh, we will post the uh, announcements to the announcements, and but probably also uh, reference or copy them into the uh, Sprint Hall. In the Sprint Hall, you can also then ask organizers if you want help. You do that by using the um, the mention, the organizer mention. So in, in Discord, how it works is that you enter this, maybe you can read this, but uh, it's at organizer. And then one of the organizers, the, the people in yellow here, uh, will then be able to, to see this and will then reach out to help. Um, there is... Um, you know, Discord, if you don't know Discord, it's, it's a bit overwhelming because there's so much functionality there that you have to um, that you have to uh, be aware of. It's quite intuitive. Some things are not that intuitive. So, for example, uh, the, the channel titles, what you see here, welcome. Uh, these are typically clickable and then open a dialogue. And th we what we do is we put uh, additional links into these um, dialogues so that you can easily navigate to other parts of the system, for example, the Zoom rooms. So if you go to the uh, the sprint hall and you click on the sprint hall title, then it should now have the link here to the 
Microsoft room that we're using uh, for the for the opening and also later on for the um, for the sprint presentations. The uh, Discord channels that we've set up for the sprints they each have an audio channel as well. Um, the the way that Discord sorts these is it puts the text channels first and then it puts the audio channels uh, second. So you have to scroll down a bit if you want to find the audio channel for a particular <coughs> sprint. In order to join a, a Discord audio channel, you just have to click on it. So entering the channel is very easy. Uh, exiting is not that easy because you have to know where to click. Um, so there is a there is something called a disconnect icon. Next, it, it will appear down here when you only enter a channel. It will be appear down here. Um, it's it's basically an X that you have here, and you can then click on that to to exit a channel. Um, you can also easily move around between channels. You can drag and drop yourself uh, and then put yourself into other channels. That's possible as well. Uh, down here you see the the, uh, the mute uh, button and you also see a um, this button here, headphones. This is a, a deafen button so you can prevent uh, to hear audio from Discord by clicking on this one. Uh, this is very useful if lots of uh, stuff is going on, especially when you're developing and maybe you don't want to listen to every everyone else talking. Um, very useful is Control K. It's a hotkey. It's a quick search. Uh, you, if you want to find something, let's say you want to find a particular sprint, you enter Control K. You start typing. It, it will autocomplete, and then you can very quickly move around. Um, something we'd like to ask is that you please don't share the Zoom links that we have outside the conference because we don't want to attract spammers. Spammers on Zoom are a real pain. Um, it's very hard to get rid of them. Because we wanted to make it very easy for you to navigate, we basically put Zoom links up which also include the passcode. So um, that's why we don't want you to, to share the links because if you have the link you can immediately join uh, a room. If you do have a problem with, uh, you know, in one of the rooms that you're using with uh, spammers, then please contact an organizer and then we can do something about it. Right, which brings us to the next point. Uh, we are using Zoom for the larger sprints and also for the, for the sprint hall, for the Microsoft track. <coughs> it's uh, quite easy to use. Um, we Actually, we forgot to enable that. Uh, we we should have uh, streamed to Zoom to YouTube as well. Maybe I can enable that uh, after the opening session, and then we can make it uh, happen on for the for the later sessions. Um, it's it's easy to use. Like I said, you can get one of these rooms by just you know calling out to an organizer and then asking them for help. <coughs> the YouTube streaming, like I mentioned, this will be set up later on. Um, and uh, this can be used to to replay sessions. Uh, it can be used to put the the session on on your TV, which is uh, nice. We will not make use of this a lot for the sprints, though. Then I wanted to point you to the digital conference bag that we have. This is available for the sprinters as well. Uh, there are coupon codes, job offers, free stuff. Uh, it's a secret link that goes to a web page that we have on the website. Um, and the, the link has been posted to the announcements, so you can find it in the announcements. So it's worthwhile going there. And you know, maybe the sp one of the sponsors is there, is uh, in the sponsor exhibit as well. Maybe they can then reach out to you. <coughs> right, so what does the schedule look like for the sprints? Um, we had already posted this on the website uh, some time ago. What we did um, in the past few days is we added some extra sessions down here. So this is new. All of these parts are new here as well. We also added a repeated uh, introduction here. Um, this is mainly meant for the Americas to when, when they join, because this is about the time when they would uh, join to, to get an additional intro. Uh, we will have the same here for the announcements on Sunday so that uh, we can manage like this. And all the these um, orange uh, or brownish uh, kind of uh, fields here, those are the sprint sessions where you can work. Um, you don't have to adhere to all of these things. This is mostly just to put some structure with it. Uh, lunchtime, you know, this is um, 
<laughs> of course depends on your time zone um, but it's certainly something where you can maybe you know mingle a bit in the sprint hall when time comes and it's always good to you know get up and, and have a coffee or have a drink or uh, do something else so <coughs> I've talked a lot about sprints I have not really introduced what a sprint is um, of course not not everyone knows or has been to a sprint before or some uh, communities call these hackathons sprint is more like the python term for these things um, the way it works is that it's it's completely self-organized so there's usually one person or maybe a few per, uh, people in, in from a, an open source uh, project or maybe it's just you know your private people who have an idea you want to try something um, and they will then want to get together and code together. That's basically the main purpose of a sprint. The um, sprints are a great opportuni opportunity to to work together with other people. If you're, you know, you want to learn something new, then you can get together with people who already know about this, perhaps, or you want to um, sit together with some people and then investigate new things. Let's say you have some great idea for a bot or so and then you want to work on that bot together. Uh, it's it's a lot more fun doing this together than just doing it by yourself. And and this is, you know, what sprints can offer. And the main purpose is to have fun, to learn new things, to try new things. There's absolutely no pressure there to get something done. There is no pressure there to succeed or to have something to show. Um, it's also possible to have negative results. So I often did sprints where I basically wanted to try out something and then found in those two days that um, it wasn't actually working because I had a made a wrong assumption, but at least then I knew that, okay, this doesn't work, right? So that's a, it's actually a good result as well because you don't have to spend time on that again. Um, you have a chance to work with open source projects so you can get into open source, that's another um, nice thing about sprints and you have the law of two feet which means well it doesn't really apply to the online conference of course let's say it's the law of two clicks or something um, the, the the what this wants to say is that if you don't you know don't think that a particular sprint team or what they do is really uh, it's interesting to you or is applicable to what you want to have at the sprint then you can just go to a different team so uh, you, sh you shouldn't be shy in you know just by if you selected a sprint team and you find that this is not the right topic for you then you can just say okay no i'm going to leave this i'm going to go to some other team because uh, this was not what i had expected that's perfectly fine no one will you know be upset or anything about this um, that's what sprints are about okay so uh, these are the the sprints that we had registered up until yesterday i i uh, don't know whether any new sprints were added these are also the sprints that have already been set up if you want to have a uh, if you want to do uh, something else something that's not on this page yet then it is still possible to register for this um, Actually, I think we should probably put this, I don't know if we have already into the sprint hall, maybe put the link here is in, in there. If you want to uh, add a new sprint, then this is still possible. It's even possible during the day. <coughs> you should always put uh, your sprint on this wiki page. The wiki page is, is not hosted by us, it's actually hosted on the Python wiki itself, but the page is uh, editable for anyone. So you can just go there, you can edit it and then uh, save it and everyone will see. And then maybe if you want to announce it, then you know you can go to the sprint hall and then um, announce it there. Or you can also ask an organizer to announce it for you so that we put something up in the announcements. Um, after you've put it on the sprint page, then please ask an organizer for help. So all you do is you write into the hall that, okay, I want to run this new session, and then you put this add organizer next to the message, and then we will see that. It will take a bit to set up, because we have to create the Discord channels, the audio channels, uh, maybe we have to set up a Zoom room for you as well. Um, and we need, uh, also in the back end, we need to do some, um, you know, organizational stuff. Um, it's you you should always uh, let us know who is in charge of each uh, of uh, the sprints so 
this is something that uh, Nicholas is currently setting up. So we have a spreadsheet that lists all the sprints, and we need a, a at least a single contact of basically who we can work with uh, in in case there are you know issues or they the sprints want to have some additions. Let's say they want to have a Zoom room, maybe for a short while or maybe for the whole sprint. Um, it's always useful to have a single contact there. So please, uh, you know, define one contact and then tell Nicholas about the contact so that we can add it to the to the sheet. Right, and uh, of course we have a code of conduct. <coughs> uh, in very short terms, the full version is on the website. In very short terms, it's be nice to each other, be professional and don't spam. Uh, especially the be nice to each other is very, very important for sprints because we want to make this very welcoming. We want to, you know, have everyone feel at home, like I said in the beginning. And it's it's very important to adhere to this. Uh, there's absolutely no need to get angry <laughs> at each other. Um, so maybe, you know, if you're getting upset or angry, maybe it's better to just walk away uh, from the from the notebook or from the desktop for a while and then maybe have some fresh air and come back. Um, if you do run into issues uh, with the code of conduct, then uh, these are the people to contact. Uh, we put the uh, Twitter and the Telegram uh, links here if you want to contact them directly. Um, most of these will also be at the sprint, so you can find them um, on, on Discord and then you know use the ad and then the name to contact them directly. Um, you can also reach out to all of these uh, by using the add coc mention and then we will see that and then uh, can can step in. Right, we hope this doesn't happen. Yet, uh, up until now we didn't have any uh, reported code of conduct issues and of course we'd like to keep it that way. So uh, please be a good citizen and then we can get uh, through the events without any of these issues. Right, so that was all I wanted to say. Enjoy the sprints. Uh, I think I overran a bit. Um, let's now start with the introductions. Uh, the way we will make this uh, work is we will have to convert from each of the teams, we will have to convert uh, the lead to a panelist and then the panelist has two minutes to introduce uh, himself or herself. Um, let me start with uh, the the sprint that we wanted to do for the EuroPython website, I don't have any slides to show there, but uh, essentially what it's about is we want to, we have a few tickets open for the website. Sorry, Sorry Mark, I would say that the rest of the people that is going to present, click in the right hand uh, button and I will, I, will, I will need to promote them to panelists while you are talking, okay? Okay, very good point. Yes, for for those who uh, we have not, uh, you know, made panelists yet. Yes, please use the the raise hand feature in uh, in uh, Zoom. Uh, so I see one, two raised hands there, and then Nicholas can make you uh, a panelist. Right. So the 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 first uh, uh, sprint, the one. Let me go back to the page here with the with the sprints. So it says your Europython website. Europython website. Uh, this is about you know d continuing development of the Europython website. We have a couple of tickets open there. It would be nice if you we could we could close a few of those. Um, unfortunately, I don't know exactly how much time I can devote to this. Uh, maybe someone else can take over the lead of of that one from the uh, web work group. Maybe it's the fun. Um, so that's essentially all I wanted to say about this. Uh, so let's see who's next. Should we just, uh, you know, Nicholas, can you just... Uh, yeah, so ne next one is the Python doc in Spanish. So Christian, can you... Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. So I cannot share my screen. It says that the host is disabled. I don't know if you can... I can please oh, sorry, let's just, uh, let's enable that. Okay, should should work now. Okay, let me try it one more time. Yes, um, and blink once if you are able to see the slides. Good. Yes, we can see. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> so don't be afraid. Slides are in Spanish, but uh, yeah, I will I will do the presentation in English so everyone can kind of follow. 
So good morning and greetings from Berlin. Um, I am just one of the many people involved in the, the official translation of the Python documentation to Spanish. I did my best to collect all these flags there. There is a lot of countries involved, so we hope to, to get many people on board. So just briefly going through uh, some details of the projects. Um, the beginning was uh, inspired by the official, the initial translation by the Python Argentina group. And they translate the tutorial. Then they decided to move to a different type of file, the Apple file, so it's easy to translate and also to synchronize with the with upstream. And this initiative was starting around May. Uh, we already managed the, to be accepted officially, and if you go now to the the official documentation page, you know you can select the Spanish from there. So just to give you a, a, an overview of the collaborations. We still have many uh, open issues because we need to open more and more due to the amount of people that get assigned more and more. We have a really active community, still 26 only without any assignment. Still uh, some PRs opens that need some people to read it in Spanish and <clears throat> make sense of it. We have many closed PRs, of course, and the community on Telegram, which is the, the, the group that we have to organize is around 90 people. So we have a web uh, link there that, of course, we can share afterwards. So if you are interested in the channel, just to get all the details to start. But in a nutshell, it's just fork, assign an issue, and then monitor your pull request. So it seems like kind of easy, right? <clears throat> uh, but the problem is that we have many countries. So which uh, words do we use since everyone refers to different things in different ways? So for that, we also have some memory. Uh, so it's like if you have some doubts, you go there, you can check which uh, word to use. Uh, and the, the local configuration is nothing else than creating some environment and to, to write a couple of tools uh, around the PO files. And if you want to, as I said uh, previously, you have your issue, um, then you create some local branch, then you submit the pull request. So this is what everything that you need to do. So it is kind of really easy, but then of course people, and this is just an overview, will maybe face these issues that some builds is failing. So just to highlight a couple of, don't be, uh, don't worry about it, just to highlight a couple of issues. Sometimes we need to, uh, uh, to run a wrap uh, tool just to uh, adjust the length of the lines. And then it is really easy. Sometimes we need to monitor some new words that we need to add some, some dictionary to be accepted because of course, as you can see here, I can use the Argentina and the Spanish one, but there are many other words that maybe come from different places. Um, and also sometimes people have some, some struggle need to up, uh, update the local branch. So of course we have some workarounds for those two. So that's it. Um, we have some frequently asked questions there, of course, uh, many people trying to do many things with Git and everything. We are all learning this together. So uh, anyone can feel free to, to ask both in the Discord and also in the Telegram channel that we have there. So I hope that I didn't overuse my two minutes, but uh, in a nutshell, that's the initiative. No, that was perfect. Thank you. So who's next? Next is uh, Scanapi, but I think Camila is not here because she's from Brazil. And so I will skip the one. Actually, um, so some of the sprints uh, had some put some text up that we should read out. Do you have okay. that? I think I have. So wait in a second. I'm looking for us. So Camila says that he's going to be connected and after 2 p.m. today. Um, yeah, sorry, there is not. So I would say if you go to Spring Scanapi, you can. Uh, you have some instructions to collaborate. And Scanapi is an automated integration testing and live documentation for your API. So it seems like something that will scan your API and document it live. <laughs> Sorry. So it's it will start at, at which, which time? 2 p.m. Will start just, uh, so Camila okay. was going to be online after 2 p.m. OK, perfect. Um, next one is Seaborn API. I don't know if we have someone from that person here. Can you raise your hand if you're uh, doing that sprint project? Or mute yourself if you're already a panelist. 
okay yeah i i was also and in the seaborne channel there is nothing uh, i was asked it's only me asking if there is a okay i'm going to move to the next one that's a python packaging i think we have one person for the python packaging here yes I'm going to promote to panelists Um, okay, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good Hi, morning. can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't do video right now because of network issues but uh i can share my screen <clears throat> do I do this? so next next one is a strawberry graphql and then it's diamond quest and commit send so this be ready Hey, does this work? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay, cool. So we're doing Python packaging and we are a group called PyPA, Python Packaging Authorities, which are, we, we make decisions on packaging stuff like for PIP and other packaging like PyPA.org. And we, uh, if you, if you look at our Discord, there, there are some links in the description and you can follow to get some ideas. And especially if you take a look at our wiki page on python.org there, <coughs> sorry, there's a list of people that should be available during the sprint. I believe most of, most of them are in North America, so they should be joining much later. And there are a list of projects that you can work on. And there's a discuss the Python.org link that has the, like you, you can use the discussion to link to which one, which person is responsible for which projects. And for myself, I am Ping. I work on PIP and PIPMF. So if you want to work on those projects, feel free to ping me on Discord for review. Yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, so next one is a strawberry graph here. Graph. Is anyone in the room? Yes. Perfect. Uh, so hello. Uh, do you see my browser? Yes. Actually, I'm not uh, the coordinator for uh, this sprint. Uh, uh, Patrick would be available uh, soon. Uh, however, just to show you what this project is, what the project is about, uh, it's a um, uh, GraphQL server that uh, instead of using uh, uh, descriptors as uh, in most uh, of the software that is dealing with schema, uh, here we are using uh, type annotations, so uh, our, uh, our way of defining schema is, uh, um, is uh, coordinated with the type annotations and the static checks of, uh, of the types. And uh, this is a quite young project, there was a, there was a big uh, refactor lately. And uh, what do we expect? There is a number of, uh, of issues here which uh, require uh, your work. And also there is uh, missing uh, documentation. So if you want to learn more about uh, uh, GraphQL, more about uh, how to, can you use uh, type annotations in various uh, ways, then please uh, join the stream. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. 
So next sprint, I think, Chuk, you are going to present for Yes, uh, yes. so uh, Diamond Quest is not my project. It's actually Jason's project, but uh, he's uh, actually in the American time zone. So um, it's so it's not, um, so yeah, he's not available right now. So I'm trying to um, go to the screen. So uh, yeah, I hope you can see the slides. If you, uh, if you can, maybe like Nicholas can tell me. Yes. So um, yeah, so this is uh, Diamond Quest. Uh, so can I, okay, so I have to use, okay, sorry, this is like a PDF. So um, yeah, so this is an accessibility first uh, performance. It's a game that actually like designed uh, for people who got like disabilities and uh, it's it's 8-bit, so if you like that as aesthetic, then, then that's great. And also it's a, it's a math game, it's reward driven, and of course it's open source. So uh, so it's, uh, Jason told me that it's actually inspired by a friend that got um, cerebral uh, parsley. So uh, basically the, uh, like uh, his friend can only move the heart. So we tried to make a game that is actually, um, you know, so, so he's get, he, like people like his friend can play, and also it's, uh, you know, uh, it's also fun for everybody. It's not just for, uh, you know, people with that disability. And so there's all these features that is actually gonna be uh, uh, implemented in the game. And also it's a math game, so it's uh, self-driven, and also it's rewarding. So it's like, uh, so it's gonna be fun rather than like very, um, you know, frustrated for people who like, you know. Uh, try to get the math right and you know so it kind of help people who maybe like also a scale of math like get math anxiety can also enjoy uh, learning math um so uh it's a bit so uh yeah you, you see that like a lot of games is actually very cute uh, being a bit and also got a keyboard interface and uh, also there are some like animations as well um uh, the most important thing is open source and it got you know a ds a bsd free license and it's also you know um, free for everyone and it will be always be false um so yeah that's it uh for them and yeah so now like uh, this is the sprint and then you know um so i think the sprint details actually in the in the in the um in the channel, uh, in the channel, so you can join the text channel um, to uh, kind of see all the details, what you have to do to get started. And Jason will be online, uh, you know, when he wake up in his time zone. So, uh, you know, please don't hesitate to go there to leave, uh, you know, any questions or comments there. And Jason will be uh, getting getting back to you later today. But you can get started. There are some uh, instructions there posted already. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. So Santiago from Committed Sen. Is the next one. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I will share my screen. Can you see my screen? We can, yes. Are you seeing the documentation? This one? Okay. Uh, hello, good morning. Um, so, in this sprint, we're going to work on Committizen, which is a tool to automate the, the generation of the version of your project and the change log. Um, and it has a lot of uh, features. Um, you can read them in the documentation. Um, some of the commands are bump, for example. You just uh, type bump, and it will bump your version, and it can generate as well the, the change log. Um, we have uh, selected many issues. They are labeled as uh, EuroPython in the GitHub repository. And I've shared in the, um, in the Discord chat a link uh, explaining about uh, how, how it's the code uh, made or, or set. Uh, basically, we, inside the committees and folder, we have a commands where each command has uh, its own file. And then in the root, uh, there are like uh, different files uh, specifically for, for each part as well. Um, then there are some recommendations, uh, highlights, and the workflow. Uh, and the, then we have uh, two branches, one for breaking changes and um, call next and normal changes uh, Called master and then a lot of uh, resources and that's it uh, the channel I think it's called the uh, spring committees and tools and I'm gonna be with the uh, Lee Wee, who is the other uh, maintainer 
but uh, he's in Taiwan, so he's uh, not connected yet. Uh, but you can already join and start uh, coding. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Santi. Chuk. Time yeah, again. it's me again, because uh, uh, this is this time is my own project. OK, so let me share my screen again. And um, yeah, so um, Terminus DB uh, client sprint. So uh, I, I hope you have uh, seen my talk uh, yesterday. And um, well, Terminus DB got a Q mascot as well. I forgot to show it in my slide that yesterday. Um, so the first thing that I want to show you is that uh, please meet the team. So uh, you can see that this is actually similar to what happening yesterday in the show show. and. That means that we all love parties. So we are cool people. You want to, you know, work with us. So <laughs> uh, one of the selling point here. And also um, we are, uh, you know, in case you don't know Terminus DB, then we are uh, open source forever. This is the most important thing. I put it uh, at the beginning. And well, well we are a graph database. Uh, so if you're interested in database or anything like, you know, data related, then this may be a project for you. Uh, we are a lightweight database. You know, uh, we use sustained uh, data uh, structure to, to store all your data. So it's very lightweight. And also uh, we can do revision control. So uh, basically, if you don't understand what that means, it means that like it can do what it does. Um, so for the for the Python clients, obviously, this is made for uh, Pythonisters. And uh, the sprint today, it will be super beginners friendly. I'm trying to also run a beginners workshop. Uh, I think I would coordinate with the organizers whether I would run it in this room or maybe in other rooms. So uh, stay tuned for the announcements. And uh, so for the sprint for, uh, for Terminus DB clients, and it will mainly about docu documentation. So if you are scared of uh, doing too much coding, then uh, that's easy. And also uh, writing some tests if you want to you know, challenge yourself a little bit more. Or even like if you don't want to contribute to anything well you can just download it and play around like that will be user testing for me uh we ac i actually have tickets for that so um and the most important thing is swags and we got actually very very nice swag uh, my colleague luke uh, actually say on the channel that like if you how uh, you know if you successfully uh, create some contribution then we can uh, send you swag if you um, contact him and let him know that like where about you are and we can send you maybe not the cup it's too difficult to sweep uh, to ship and it may be broken but like the socks the t-shirt and uh, the stickers it's easy to 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 uh, mail it to you, so um, please consider joining us. It will be fun. <clears throat> awesome, thank you. So nice. You want to present about Pedro? Yes. Hello, hello. Good morning. Bom dia. Bom dia. Uh, here we go. Perfect. So, uh, hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Python Sprints. Uh, my name is Laís. You might have seen me around or be hosted by me around one of the one of the talks. Um, I hope you're having fun. And well, so I'm the, I'm Kedro Developer Advocate, and I will be running uh, the sprint in our room today with uh, my project my project man manager called Yetunde. Uh, so basically, I'm what Kedro is. So Kedro is a Python development framework that helps you build uh, data pipelines. So um, we have a template that is based on the cookie, uh, cookie cutter data science, and it implements software engineering best practices um, for data science and machine learning models. Uh, so it's basically, it that has a very modular kind of uh, style to it. So it, some people actually say that it kind of looks like um, the React or the jungle of data science. Uh, so what we're trying to do with Kedro is basically make sure that data engineers and data scientists collaborate in a very peaceful and effective, ineffective way, um, making production ready code from the get-go. Um, so we have a few issues here for you already. Um, we are going to be, there's issues from, for every type of difficulty. Uh, if you're a newbie, I would more than happy to help you learning how to make your first pull request. Um, and yeah, so please, we're waiting for you with this list of issues and uh, just join us. And we also have swags for you. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So next project is the board backup. I think Thomas is over here. Yeah, good morning. Uh, let me share my screen. 
Where are you streaming from? Uh, I'm from Germany. Oh, okay. So, okay, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, so this is about a board backup sprint. Uh, my name is Thomas Waldmann and I'm the project maintainer. And so what's Borg about? Uh, it's basically a backup software, so you can backup your, all your files with it. And uh, the special thing, it's a deduplicating backup tool. So you can save lots of space and it also does compression and encryption. And it even authenticates all your data so you can make sure the data is still as it was when you backupped it. So some of the features, um, yeah, space efficiency, I already mentioned, you can back up to untrusted storage servers because you can always verify if your stuff is okay. Uh, there's a wide range of compression levels. We support lots of platforms, uh, except the Windows. Windows support is still a uh, work in progress. Uh, there's a command line interface, and also there's a separately available graphical interface named Volta. And uh, as a backup storage, you can either use your own server or your own USB disk, or you can also rely on some commercial offers. Uh, the code is mostly in Python 3, or oh, it's completely in Python 3. Um, and the Python code is most of our code. And a little bit of code is also in Cython. Uh, some of it is in C, uh, some own hash table implementation, so we need uh, less memory. And we also use some third party libraries like MessagePack, OpenSSL, and some compression libraries. Uh, these are the tools and services we use. We use Git, we use PyTest, uh, we use Sphinx. The continuous integration runs on Travis, and we use uh, Vagrant and VirtualBox for platform testing. Uh, we do bounties uh, using Bounty Source, and the documentation is hosted on readthedocs.org. Um, some of the sprint topics is uh, if you are completely new to the project, you can get an introduction to the code base. Um, we want to debug, analyze, and fix some issues. If you like, you can also work on the documentation. And what would be especially useful if you use some unusual platform like uh, BSD, uh, unusual for us, or macOS or Open Indiana. Uh, you could help us improving uh, the compatibility to that. Or you can work on whatever you want, uh, just uh, join our channel. And we have a GitHub issue about this print, it's issue 5251. And if that sounds interesting, just join us for the board backup sprint. Uh, my name is Thomas Waldmann, and you can find me in the board backup sprint room. Okay, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck. So, Epikachu or Epica is the next project, but I think no one is here. And also, there is no information in the channel. So, I have the feeling that there is someone from a different time zone. Uh, so, I'm going to skip that one. And that means the hypothesis is the last project. Um, I think Zach is over here. I am. Can people hear me? Yes, perfect. Welcome. Excellent. Uh, well, hello from sunny Australia. You might be thinking, what is an Australian doing at EuroPython? But I figure if we're European enough for Eurovision, we're European enough for EuroPython too. Uh, so I'll be running a sprint this morning while I'm still awake thanks to time zones on Hypothesis which is a tool for what we call property-based testing, uh, which is a style of testing where instead of saying that this specific input leads to a specific output, you declare what kinds of inputs should be allowed and a hypothesis tries to generate an output which makes your test fail. Uh, this might be easier to explain with a little demo, which is also going to be a sneaky preview of a thing I have in a pull request. So you should be able to see my terminal now. And I can actually ask Hypothesis to write me a test. Let's try testing the read.compile function. 
which compiles a regular expression. Uh, and Hypothesis will duly spit out this test code for me. Uh, so if I pipe that into a file, I can then run PyTest on it. And PyTest tells me that this is just unsatisfiable, and that's because I haven't actually told Hypothesis what to generate. Because the read module is in the standard library, it doesn't have type hints, so we don't actually know what the pattern should be. So let's substitute in something for the pattern. If we instead tell it that the pattern should be text, that is any Unicode string, and then we run PyTest again, we discover that there are actually a whole bunch of different exceptions we can get if we just try to compile arbitrary strings as regular expressions. And personally, I wouldn't have guessed that there are so many different ways to have an invalid regular expression pattern. Uh, specifically, what would you do if you want to join in a in with our sprint, we've got a couple of things. There's a hypothesis tutorial. If you just want to learn how to use it, you can work through that and ping me with questions and I'll help you out as you go through. If you want to contribute to our documentation, add some new features, fix some internal issues and so on, we've got about 10 of those open listed in our meta issue that you can see. And I would particularly love it if someone with Django experience wants to look at that because we have a cool feature where we can take an arbitrary form or a model and generate instances of it. And it would be great if we could leverage the validators as well to make that better. Or finally, if you're sprinting on any other project, if it's open source, I would also love to help you write hypothesis tests for those other projects as well. So if you want to do two sprints at the same time, we can totally do that too. Thanks very much. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. And thank you for hypothesis. Um, so I think that was the last project. If I we are missing someone, please raise your hand. Otherwise, I think we are done. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. So just a comment I want to say. <clears throat> um, Mark already mentioned it, but if we are we are planning to use Discord for all the sprints. <clears throat> uh, it should be more easy to to manage for everyone because you just can keep that Discord open and the channel audio open. But if you have more people and or you need some something that Discord is not providing, please contact me or contact other organizers, and you can uh, and we can give you a Zoom room for 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 the sprint. Uh, uh, Nicola, Nicholas, I just wanted to uh, to jump in because um, I I think I just want to give you a very quick intro in how to uh, actually make the video work in Discord because that may not be obvious. Um, you should see my screen. Can you can you see yes. my screen? Yes. Okay. Excellent. So what you see here, this is the sprints category. These are all the sprints text channels, and then uh, down here you see the the hashtag. This is for text, and then you see these um, speakers here for for the audio channels. Um, to enter these, let me just exit again. Uh, okay. To, to enter the audio channel, it's very easy. You just click on it, it works like this, and then you're a uh, member of this audio channel. You can only be a member of one audio channel on Discord. Uh, so if you click somewhere else, then you just you switch like this, right? You can also drag and drop yourself into some other uh, channel that works as well. Now, that's audio. Audio is easy. <coughs> if you want to set up your audio devices, you go here to the user settings, you go here to voice and, and video, uh, and then you can set your input-output device for, for audio. Down here you can set your, your video. I, I chose this uh, virtual webcam here because you can only have one webcam on at a time. But uh, you can configure others that you have here as well, right? OBS also works if you want to use that for presentations. Um, now, if you want to enable your video, you go here to the... You, you can click on the audio uh, channel. You you get a, you know, a window that looks a bit more... a bit like, like the Zoom window. Um, and then you can... you see down here the controls. You have video and screen. So you can do screen sharing in here which works a uh, lot like, like Zoom does. And you can also enable the video here. You click here and then the uh, video goes on. Um, there's something strange in Discord. It seems to mirror your, your uh, webcam automatically. So that's something that to be aware of when you're showing text. So for example, here you see everything mirrored. 
it's a bit weird. I don't know how to switch it off in Discord. Maybe there is no way to switch it off. Um, so just something to be aware. Right, that's all I wanted to say. Ah, yeah, and this is the uh, famous disconnect button that's, you know, not very intuitive. So you can click on this one to leave this, or you can right-click on your name and then... Um, actually, it doesn't. That's interesting. Okay, so you c you always have to use this button down here if you want to leave, like this. Um, that's and it. You can also share a screen. I, I think you already mentioned that. But yes, yes, uh, there's a button there for sharing a screen as well. Okay, so we want to try to uh, have you use Discord for, for most of the things because it's very easy to use for, for you. You don't have to ask us. You can just set up everything yourself. If you have a need for something bigger, we have, uh, I think, around 15 or so Zoom licenses available so we can set up additional rooms on Zoom and Zoom can handle 300 participants if you like. So um, this is for scaling up. Right, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. So I miss uh, in the list. Uh, Oliver is here for the Skitty Learn uh, project. So sorry, Oliver, uh, I skipped uh, you. So yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so here I'm. Hello, everyone. I'm here to present uh, the Scikit-Learn Sprint. So Scikit-Learn is a machine learning library in Python. Uh, so we use NumPy, SciPy, and Cyton a bit, and also Python programming. So we prepared for the sprint a small uh, getting started uh, sheet that we linked in our in our channel. So with the repository, the main documentation for the developer version, and some getting started in, um, instructions. Uh, so basically, those are instructions from past online sprint that we had uh, recently. And there is one uh, that is uh, mainly uh, like a, some kind of video tutorial to get started contributing with uh, Scikit-Learn. And another one, uh, actually, I don't have the link, it's uh, there, uh, which is, um, uh, no, oh, made, I made a mistake. Okay, I need to fix the link, uh, uh, which is about uh, a text uh, version. Uh, if you don't like videos, and if you want to contribute to the Scikit-Learn project, so it's ideally if you're already a user and you found a bug or want to improve something, then feel free to uh, to open an issue and then we can discuss how to fix it. Um, and otherwise, uh, we have labeled in the issue tracker some some um, issues um, that are uh, uh, either uh, required some help, and some t some of them are uh, good first issues for first-time contributors. Uh, they could be documentation or like s some simple <coughs> code change and things like this. Uh, there are also some uh, old pull requests that are stalled. Uh, so if you are a specialist of one of uh, a scikit-learn clustering or something like that, or a user, and you want to help move those uh, pull requests forward, you can uh, feel free to take over those if they have not been updated in the uh, last couple of months, for instance. Uh, all right, so let's discuss on, on the channel directly if you if you need it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think we are done. Mark, anything else? Yes, I think so too. I think we can uh, we can now uh, start. Can, can yeah? we have a, a beginner's workshop here? If people want to, uh, you know, haven't make any contribution, haven't been to any sprints, they could stay here and uh, oh, I'll yeah. give a short. Yeah. Good, good, good idea. Sprint intro. Yes. So let me just uh, play the applause because I like playing the applause. So. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, Chuck, do you have anything to show? You know, I have. I have slides. Uh, just oh. a quick slide deck, and I have some hands-on exercise for the beginners. And I also created a text channel. It's called Beginners Help Desk uh, in the Sprint uh, category. So, okay. if uh, you have any, you know, questions about Git or pull requests, you can ask me there. And um, so, yeah, if if you are very experienced in Sprint, you know what you're doing. You can basically start uh, work on the project that you want to work on. And Someone asked, uh, "What time will people show their work?" So there's an end of, uh, you know, end of day sessions there. I think maybe we can coordinate that. But basically, uh, it will be quite improvised. So um, yeah, stay tuned to the to the channels. I think uh, yeah, we would make some announcement there. So yeah, so I would just share my screen now, and 
here. Okay. So yeah, so this is actually a reuse some slides that I've done before. Uh, I've, I've run some uh, open source beginners bootcamp, so people found this helpful. So uh, I hope that if you're new to open source, if you're new to um, you know, uh, so uh, what you know, contribution contributing to open source, or even you're new to GitHub, <laughs> that like I am here to help you. And um, so I'm sure uh, you know. I, I don't want to spend too much time because like I, I think you have seen enough of me today. <laughs> um, so yeah, I organized a lot of things, and I have a channel for beginners. I actually do have a Git tutorial on uh, that I've done on Twitch before. It may still be there. Uh, it may not, but I can share the link uh, of the YouTube copy there uh, if anybody want to get more information about Git. I'll share it in the beginners uh, channel. So, um, so if you wonder, like, okay, I just come here for your Python, and I try to stay as long as I could. So, what is this Sprint open source thing about? Like, maybe you have no idea what this is. You just like use Python for work, or you just started to use Python. So, you may have like no idea about like. So, okay, what is open source? You know. Um, so uh, I think open source software, and uh, I, I won't be as good as uh, you know explaining as this video so i'm just like playing this uh, i think i hope it's okay to play this video uh, i don't know whether we're streaming or not but uh, this is actually a youtube from, uh, a youtube video from intel so i if that's okay I, i'll just play it uh. open source software is sorry i start again <laughs> most people understand that open source software is software copied for free What's less understood is how the potential chaos of all these copies can be transformed into a collaborative whole. Let's break down how open source works using a family cookie recipe as a metaphor we can all relate to. Just like code, all recipes start by somebody writing the original version. In this case, Grandma May has developed a delicious cookie recipe. She shares it with her family, telling them they can use her recipe as long as they follow her rules. In Grandma May's case, anyone who bakes cookies with her recipe has to credit her as the author. And if they make changes to her recipe, she has to be allowed to use those changes in future versions of the recipe. The same thing happens when someone writes and publishes an original version of open source software. They put rules called licenses in place so that others can use and change the code they've written as long as they follow the author's license. Grandma May's recipe provides her family with a place to start that they can customize to their own liking. Aunt Maria decided to add chocolate chips to her batch of cookies. In software, this departure from the original code is called a branch. Aunt Maria's change was such a great success with everyone who tasted the cookies that she asked Grandma May to add chocolate chips to her original recipe. At this point, Grandma May needs to begin acting as a maintainer, looking after the integrity of the original recipe and deciding which changes she will incorporate. In this case, Grandma May agreed that the chocolate chips were a good addition, and so from then on Grandma May's recipe included chocolate chips. Aunt Maria is now a contributor because she has contributed something to the recipe. In open source software development, this process of incorporating a change or patch into the original code is called upstreaming because it's flowing back to the original source. If the original brand of chocolate chips becomes unavailable, Grandma May is responsible for updating the upstream chocolate chip patch with a new brand because she accepted the patch. The benefits of incorporating your changes into the original recipe are pretty amazing, leading to the popular open source motto, upstream early and often. The sooner you upstream, the sooner the community can back you up, not only by maintaining the recipe, but also by testing it in as many configurations as there are community members using it. Uncle Miles went out on a limb and added peanut butter and nuts to his batch of cookies. His wife and friends all love peanut butter, so they thought his additions greatly improved the original recipe. But when Uncle Miles tried to upstream his nutty changes, Grandma May, who detests peanut butter, refused to add peanut butter and nuts to her recipe. Uncle Miles resolved to move on with his version of the recipe with no plans of merging the two again at any point. 
in open source software development, a permanent split like this is called a fork. Grandma May's recipe is getting better all the time. As people continue to contribute, her family gets to learn from and enjoy the latest and newest cookie recipes as they are created. As Grandma May's family grows and her recipe is shared outside the family, more and more people will become contributors. As you can imagine, things could get pretty complicated for Grandma May as the maintainer of the original recipe with more contributors. The same is true for open source software. More contributors and more versions of code make it essential that we have a way of collaborating on changes. This is why we need the structure, common language, and roles we just talked about with our recipe example. Now let's recap really quickly. Someone writes an original version of the open source software. They set rules around how it can be used and changed called licenses. This gives contributors a starting point to then branch out from and make changes or patches. Some request their changes to be upstreamed to merge their new version with the original version. If the maintainer decides to incorporate the change, it becomes part of the main branch and will be maintained by the community even if the contributor stops being involved in the project. Sometimes, software is taken in a direction that we know will not be incorporated back into the original version. This kind of permanent split is called a fork. Open source has the potential to be complicated because it's created by communities of people. But these ways of working manage those communities, making it possible to benefit from new versions from an authoritative source, the maintainer. Actual products based on open source can be made up of dozens, even hundreds of recipes like Grandma May's, which is why having a disciplined way of managing change is so important. In open source, the possibilities are endless, but we need the rules and roles to keep things organized. Right, so um, yeah, that's a very good video. I love it. I play it all the time, <laughs> every time I give this presentation. Uh, so um, I also dig up a little bit history when did open source started. So according to Wikipedia, it started with a person, uh, Richard Stallman, and then uh, in 1980s, like uh, he actually wanted to access some code for his printer, but the source code, you know, uh, is it's not open source. So, well, if there's no open source uh, at that time, and then he can't access the code. So, um, actually, he started to, um, you know, started this open source thing because maybe he, he think that it's a good idea that like some of the code should be accessible for everybody. So I uh, started this um, GNU project and you may heard of like GNU a lot because they are licensed, the like, GNU license that, you know, it's basically one of the uh, open source license, one of the first open source license. So a GNU public, a general public license. So I think there's a, now is there's a uh, other versions as well because it's evolved. I think there's a version three now. I'm not so sure, but uh, yeah, you'll see that everywhere. So, um, so why do we like open source? Uh, well, we like open source. Was one of the reasons like, it's free. Uh, I, well, it's also part of like why I love it as well. Um, but you know, it's more than that. It's not just means that it's free. It also like kind of enables some small companies, you know, startups, and you know, even like if you have one man company or one man like project team that you could easily access to a lot of tools that could make your work easier. Um, also, like uh, you can use that knowledge. Uh, actually, like one thing I love about the sprints, you learn so much by you know contributing to a project. You can see other projects code and to see like oh people do things differently and you know you can learn from them. I, I copy a lot of you know for example uh, the testing setup or like the packaging setup that some other project use. I learn so much from them. So. Um, also encourage collaboration. Uh, I hope that you all love collaborating because you're here, you love uh, you know, coding with people. Uh, we can actually using Discord, you can do a lot of pair programming today. Um, I do that a lot within my company. So I hope that it's also work fine today. And um, also like now I think there's a mental exercise. Um, you can, well, you don't have to tell me, but if you want to type in the chat, that's also okay. That's, uh, do you use any open source software like every day in your work? Uh, can you name them? So now it's like try to think about what you're using day to day is actually open source. Um, so, um, well, who is involved in open source? Who make this all like happen? Um, 
So actually, everybody can participate in open source, including you and me. Uh, it's not just someone as smart as Guido or as smart as some of the maintainers. Um, actually, as long as you follow the rules, uh, because in the video, uh, it also mentions there are rules at the end that uh, try to maintain the whole system. Uh, well, the license, of course, I follow the license. Sometimes, you know, uh, some license is like, okay, you can use whatever is free, uh, but some of them may be restricted to non-commercial use. So uh, make sure you check that. And also there are code of conducts most of the time for projects, uh, just to make sure that everybody is nice to everybody, even online or making pull requests or commenting. Um, so, well, you can help actually sometimes by just being the user, like uh, today I have some tickets for my project that is user testing. Basically, you don't have to write any code for me uh, or write any documentation for me. You can just like test it and let me know if something something breaks, you know. Um, but one step further, you can be contributor, you can be like writing code, you can contribute to the project by um, upstreaming. Uh, we learned some new terms in the video. Um, uh, and eventually, uh, you may actually, uh, what happens to some people is that they become a very, you know, um, they, they contribute a lot, they, they contribute cons consistently, and then maybe people invite them to be one of the maintainers in the team. And, uh, or you, you go for another path, you, you know, you have made, um, you know, manage the community, you uh, help to promote that project. You help to make sure that you know um, everybody's you know the users are happy, everybody's nice to each other. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of roles you can play in open source, and um, everybody can do something if they want to. Uh, you can decide uh, for yourself how much time you want to involve in the projects. Um, so where can I contribute to open source? Well, actually anywhere you like. You know, we are now doing it online. That's fine, um, but. Uh, you know, normally we'll have the sprint after the conference so people can still stay if they are not rushing back home, they can still stay and uh, work together. Um, so, but also there's other other places, you know, like uh, Mark has already showed us uh, in the beginning that, you know, there are hackathons, there's like events that are organized by uh, people. Um, I. I actually organized the London Sprints. Uh, I didn't start mm -hmm. it. Actually, uh, someone, uh, you know, actually, uh, Mark Lassier, like the, the uh, maintainer of uh, Pandas, I started it. And but I just like helped to to keep on working on it. And but you can start your own, actually. Like you can start your own meetups, you know, to to uh, to organize sprints. Um, so conferences like your Python, like we have this tradition of having the sprints after the conference. So if you go to a conference, try to see if they have a sprint, uh, see if you can stay maybe one or two days behind to just uh, do, you know, uh, work on this, you know, work in the sprint. And private sprints, you can actually get all your friends and just contribute if you want to. Um, and I'm, you know, we've been big friends in this conference, so I hope that you know you can find friends that also love uh, doing this uh, together with you. Um, so, how can I contribute? And I have actually a slide deck that I think uh, my friend Lays also shared it like before. Uh, you can actually, yeah, this this slide's uh, you know all yours. You can just like go there. That's the link there. I hope this still works. If not, you can find it on slides.com and put my name Chet Tang underscore Ho there. Uh, you'll find this slide deck. I will share it again in the beginners channel as well. That actually. Yeah, let's test, test if the link is still working. Okay, that's good, it's still working. So um, so yeah, it's actually a step-by-step -step guide that uh, you can make your first um, pull request if you have never done that before, or if you have never, you know, I know some a lot of people, you know, they have already like, they are, they are developers, they have already used Git in their work, but, uh, but the steps may be a little bit different uh, in open source projects. So uh, this, that, this slide deck, that actually all the steps are quite standard for a lot of projects. Of course, there's some like minor um, differences, like, so please, you know, if you have doubt, ask the maintainer of the project that you're working on. Um, but as an exercise, you can follow all these steps to uh, make your pull request to a, a dummy um, repo that I don't own. I just like hijack someone's repo, but they welcome people to uh, use it as an exercise to uh, create a PR. So um, I hope you found this useful. Oh, by the way, this like square, like uh, arrow bracket thing, it means that, you know, um, just use whatever name you see fit. So uh, replace this whole thing uh, with uh, your own name. Uh, not your name, but like the, the name that you make, make up for, for your, um, for your thing, you know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and all these, you know, all these things are linked, you know, you 
this blue and sometimes you can click on it and find more information. So I think that's it. There is a text channel that's for beginners. I will post uh, all the resources, like including the Git tutorial that I had and also uh, this uh, make your first pull request hands on exercise. I'll put everything there. You can access it. And um, if you have questions, ask me there. I think it's Sometimes like I don't mind people, you know, ask me like individually if you're really, really shy, but I encourage people to ask in the channel because then everybody can learn from everybody. So um, I think that's it. And I'll be staying around, you know, not all the time in the sprint, but I will be, you know, uh, most of them, like, I will be online and keeping an eye on the chat. I may be, you know, sometimes going out to do a little bit of my own personal stuff, but I will be staying online for these two days as much as I can. So uh, that's it for me. And uh, I think there's a one Q and A. And oh yes, sure, the slides would be uh, all on the text channel of Beginners Workshop. So um, you can find it in the in this or the Sprint channel. You will find one that's called Beginners Help Desk. I will put uh, all the materials there. So that's it for me. Okay, so I guess uh, we're done with the opening and with the uh, workshop. That was a nice introduction, Chuck. That's very useful. Um, because we forgot to put up the uh, YouTube streaming um, this morning, um, I'm going to close this meeting now and then we will wait for the recording um, from Zoom and then try to upload that to YouTube and I can post a link um, to the, the Sprint Hall. All right, happy sprinting. See you in a bit.